Come on, let people do their job. Onto the pavement, please. Thank you. Right back there. Uh, the victim's male, sir. Uh, we haven't got a name yet. Who was first on the scene? Uh, Steve. The biker reported it. Was he involved? No, no. The bike's completely clean. No, he just found the casualty. Whoever did this has cleared off. They're well away by now. Right. Let's get this properly taped off. All uh, right. Mike! And they've called the air ambulance. Uh, well, according to the paramedics, he's going to need more attention before he's moved. Sarge. Did you get onto control? Check the availability of the ventilated bed. Will do. Absorb Mike's air request best state. Don't make me run too far, Alan. I've got all my kit. No, I'll get it quite close. Just hang on in there. Right. What have we got? Broken fib, broken tin. Query pelvis, query spinal injuries. Internal bleeding. Possible hematoma. No way I can get a tube done. Any loss of consciousness? No. It was like this when I found him. And uh, you didn't move him? No. Well done. Well, we'll aim to get him stabilised before we shift him. Right, Sorry, this isn't for the squeamish. Come on, somebody be in to take some statements from you in a minute. You? <laughs> You'll be lucky. Imagine it. Not a more customer saw nothing. Well, you seem pretty certain of that, Mr... Owens. Yes, I am. You haven't sorted out who it is yet, have you? What, the casualty? Adam Cracknell. One of the Cracknells off the estate. He was drinking in here before it happened. Yeah, well, maybe he was with someone, and maybe one of your customers saw the car that hit him. And if they did, you think they'd tell you? The boy's trouble, his whole family are. None of my punters are weeping buckets over him. I said on the pavement, sir, if you don't mind. You are right, Steve? Yeah, I'm fine, sir. How about witnesses? Uh, there was a bloke in a, a dark overcoat and a polo neck sweater. He was. I didn't get his name. I asked him to wait, sir. All right. I was attending to the casualty, sir. He did right. Inspector Munro, officer in charge. Dr. McRae. What are his odds, Doctor? Well, this is the golden hour. If we can support his breathing and circulation and keep his airway clear, well, we're in with a shout. I see. It's far too early to give anything definite, but I think your investigators should know that our friend's got some nasty crush injuries. What does that mean? Well, normally I'd expect to see primarily impact injuries, broken bones, that sort of thing. But this is different. When you're hit by a car, you're normally thrown to one side or onto the bonnet, yeah? In this case, I'd say the vehicle had literally run him over. Oi! Now, they stripped the lot. I bet there isn't even an A to Z left. Sierra Oscar from 358 receiving. Go ahead, Gary. Can I have a PNC check on a vandalised Nissan Stanza? Registration number Delta 403, Echo Yankee November. Not the brightest spot to leave your car. Adam Cracknell, is he the youngest? No, there are two younger sisters. The two elder brothers were sent down for that racist attack. And that's before you start counting assorted uncles? Yeah. Cathy, would you go with the casualty so you can get anything out of him? Right, sir. I uh, gather that the family are not too popular on the estate. Well, no, the other tenants have got out a petition against them, complaining about late-night noise, you know, vandalism, general antisocial behaviour. They'll be lucky. The council have probably run out of estates to dump them on. Even so, let's remember that they're the victims in this case. Yes, sir. <laughs>
Right, gentlemen, I know that most of you were preoccupied with your own entertainment at the time, but if any one of you saw anything of the accident, I need to speak to you. Even if you think it was totally insignificant. Whatever you saw may be of help. Oh, yeah. yeah. Who's it going to help? Us. It might help us ascertain exactly who was responsible for the accident. Does it matter? Whoever did it was doing anyone who lives around here a favour. One less crack on the estate, that's one less bit of scum to worry about. You locked that one away when you did his brothers. Well, whatever your personal feelings, if you saw anything at all, I want you to speak to me. Is that clear? That's Crystal, Sergeant. Crystal. How's he doing? Not good. Okay, thanks, Cathy. See if you can get a rough time when the doctors think we might be able to have a word with him. PC Gunnell, sir. Accident investigator. Thanks for turning out. I won't say it's my pleasure, sir. <laughs> can I ask you who marked these? One of my officers. Why? Well, they've got the tie marks starting here, but if you get down and have a good look, you can see they go back at least another three metres. I'll take your word for it. It's worth taking the time to get it right, sir. After all, it's me who's got to stand up in court as an expert witness. Of course. Can I show you something, sir? See here, the tyre marks vanish. That's extra weight pushing the vehicle down just for a second. Oh, what course is that? That's where our pedestrian became an unwitting passenger, somewhere on top of the car, sir. So the victim was thrown? Yes. There's no chance he could have gone under the wheels? No, no, no. That would only happen if the vehicle involved was much bigger, a bus or a lorry. Why do you ask, sir? Uh, the doctor suggested our pedestrian had crush injuries. She thought it was unusual. Well, if she's right, sir, I'd have to agree. And if that is the case, well, it'd be hard to put it down as an accident. I could do with a bit of that. What, kissing a tarmac? Eh? That's the only way we catch the Joker who did this, yeah. Straight forensic work. No politics, no community rubbish. Yeah, just a mouthful of gravel. That's him. Who? The guy who said he saw the accident. Hey! What's your game? I told you to wait here, give a statement. Oh, I, I had to go. You had to go nowhere. Why, right, Steve, what's this all about? This is the guy who said he saw the accident, Sarge. Might have said I did, sort of. Sort of? And then what happened? You change your mind? Dunno. You don't just one minute say yeah, you Okay, got Steve, a... I'm sure Mr... Name's Givens. I'm sure Mr Givens will only be too pleased to give us all the help he can, as soon as he gets over this bout of shyness. Isn't that right, Mr Givens? <laughs> you know, they call them the neighbours from hell. It's not hard to see why, is it? No. Mrs. Crawford? Yeah, who's been playing things against us this time? Come on, Ebby. And these are from the vehicle that was involved? Yes, sir. Debris doesn't sit on the main part of the road for long, sir. Not if there's traffic passing. I see. We're looking for a red vehicle. Give me a bit longer and I'll give you make model in here. Oh, George, this abandoned Nissan Gary's dealing with. Get on to CAD, check its colour. If it's red, let them know we're interested. Why, right, sir. So you know the Cracknells? The family whose boy was injured in the accident. I don't have nothing to do with them, if that's what you're asking. You no, know, but reputation. I mean, they're not high on the popularity states, are they? Your mates must have told you that. What mates? Yeah, I've heard things. In the pub and that. Two of them got done for smacking an Asian bookie, didn't they? Yeah. Has that got anything to do with why you're reluctant to help us now? Mr Gibbons? Well, say I did help you. I mean, say I told you what happened. No one's going to thank me for it, are they? I suppose you want me to come down to the hospital now. We could give you a lift if that would help, Mrs. Crackman. <sighs> if it's not one thing, it's another. I'll put a dummy there at this. Your son's injuries are serious. You do realise that, don't you? Yeah, I did hear you the first time. Weren't your mob chasing him that caused it, was it? No. I won't put it past you. You've really put two of my boys inside on the word of a packy. Come on. If I've got to go, I might as well get it done with. It's definitely my car. 
Not some mistake. I'm afraid not, Miss Holland. We've already identified it from the registration number. And he got it just before Christmas. Dad gave me some of his redundancy. Miss Holland, we need to know. Did you use your car today? No. I never drive to work. Last time I saw it, it was parked across the road from my bedsit. I see. Is it bad? I mean, really bad. Stupid thing is, I could only afford third party. Miss Holland, your car may have been involved in an accident. A pedestrian was seriously injured. I didn't know. You didn't say. God, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to just think of myself. Deliberate. At the moment, we've got nothing certain, though. I've examined the casualty's clothing. Definite tie marks. Now, the only other time I've seen that was when the casualty was a woman and the driver was her husband. He got nine for attempted murder. Either way, we could be looking at a lot more than mere failing to stop. Yeah. Well, I can see that that's possible. I mean, there's more than enough people with a grudge against the cracknels. And not least their Asian neighbours. Yeah. Which might go some way to explaining our star witness's reluctance to help. All I saw was the car driving off, nothing else. All right then, tell us about the car. What was it, big, small, green, yellow, what? Orangey red, hatchback thing. What made you take any notice? Were you aware that an accident had happened? I suppose, I heard brakes in there, screaming. And you still failed to report the incident? How would you have felt if that was you lying there? Biker come round a couple of seconds later. He phoned you and that. I left him to it. He was better at it than I was. Mr. Gibbons, Barry, we're grateful for the help that you've given us thus far. And I know that coming forward required courage. But regardless of all that, you do have a responsibility to help us. I don't have to help no one. And there is another reason. We have evidence to suggest that this morning's incident may have been more than an accident. We believe that there may have been a measure of intent behind it. Now, if that is the case, and you know it, you have a responsibility to tell us everything that you saw. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah, he did do it on purpose. And how do you know that? Because I watched him. I saw it all. This Packy. He drove straight at him. You saw the accident? Is that what you're saying now? <laughs> like you said, there weren't nothing accidental about it. He hit him, then reversed back a bit, then drove straight over him. You ask me, he was out to kill him. Mrs. Cracknell? It all happened so fast. All I saw was what I said. I understand that, Mr. Gibbons, but it's just I have to get the circumstances of the incident clear in my own mind. Already stuck me neck out enough. You see, you've made certain allegations. I ain't alleged nothing. I don't see why it should all be down to me. It's not, but you're a valuable eyewitness. What I really need from you now is anything else you can tell me about the driver. Oh. You didn't say anything about getting a look at him to start with. Why was that? Do you know him? I've seen him around, that's all. On the estate? Can you describe him? About my height. Well built. Flash. Wears good jackets, isn't it? Barry, I need to be sure. Are you certain that this is the same person you saw in the car today? Well, after the car had hit Cracknell, the driver looked round to see he was OK to reverse. It was this Packy. He was the one driving. Did you get a loser's statement from the registered keeper? Yeah, Miss Holland said that she parked the car where she normally does, and the last time she saw it was on the way to the bus stop. Or so she says. Meaning? I don't know, Sarge. When we told her, well, her reaction was a bit strange, you know? You think she was covering that she's the driver? No, I'm not saying that, Sarge. Well, good, because we've got a witness who says that they saw a young IC4 male behind the wheel. Not a description that fits Lynn Holland, I hope. Oh, thank you for your help, Mr. Givens. Oh, I don't need to be sitting around at home. I'm on the ninth floor. From my window, I can see all over the estate. Is that right? See no end of things. I thought you were loath to be seen helping us. Well, if there was something in it for me. 
Well, when we need to speak to you again, Mr. Givens, we will. You'll have to wait for forensics and fingerprints, of course. But otherwise, you're satisfied that Nissan is the accident vehicle? Yes, Sergeant. Success? Well, I prefer to hold off from saying that until I've checked a couple of things in the witness statement, sir. Such as? The driver, the Asian male. From the position of the seat, he'd have to be under 5'5 five five tall. I see. Yeah. Well, call me a sceptic, but it wouldn't be the first time a witness to an RTA has gone in for a bit of imagination, would it, sir? Mr. Cracknell, I'm sorry about Adam. Are you? At least you won't be able to give him no more hassle for a while. The only hassle Adam ever got was what he deserved. He's no angel. Never made out he was. Look, Dion, there's some question over whether this was an accident at all. What are you saying? That someone drove Adam on purpose? Well, do you know anyone who may have had a grudge against him? Mrs Cracknell, has this got anything to do with Adam's brothers? The racist attack? My boys were defending themselves. Is that the way Adam saw it? I mean, was he getting his own back? Mixing it? Yeah, maybe that would give someone a reason to want to seriously hurt him. Look, unless you tell us what's been going on... Adam can fight his own battles. Oh, from a wheelchair? If I tell you, you'll nick Adam, won't you? Not that lot. No, we will investigate the whole matter, including Adam. Nobody's above the law. I need time to think. So, Givens is heading towards the pub down Askill Road. He says he saw the red car stationary here. Not possible, sir. What? Not possible, Sarge. Why not? This time out so clearly, the vehicle was travelling well in excess of 30 miles an hour. They also show taking the corner. Now, if it had started there, it would have been going in a straight line, not a curve, and it definitely wouldn't have been up to speed. Yeah, there's no way a hatchback like that could go from standing to 30 that quickly. That's correct. All right, so as things stand, Mr Gibbons' statement doesn't hold water. Right, let's carry on. Well, Gibbons says that he then saw the car hit Adam Cracknell. Which occurred here. Then, he watched as the red car reversed three, four yards. That's when he saw the suspect, the Asian. Then it went forward again, running over the casualty. How, Sarge? Well, the initial impact happened here. But the car, after braking, came to a rest here. And the pedestrian ended up here. Well, further on. At impact, the pedestrian would accelerate with the vehicle, take on the same speed. The thing is, pedestrians aren't fitted with brakes. Therefore, in effect, he'd overtake the vehicle landing here. So there's no way that Gibbons could have seen what he said he did? That's so right. why did he make that up? Why lie? And how much more has Mr Gibbons invented? Hello, Mr Gibbons. Need to have another word. Cut the problems with your statement. Miss Holland? Lynn? I told you before, your car's not here, it's in the car pan. Yeah, yeah, you said. There's no point you being here then, is there? I tried to ring the hospital to find out how he was. The one who got hit. But they wouldn't tell me. Oh, sir. I, I've just come from the hospital. I've been talking to the boy's mother. I managed to get her onto the racist attacks. Go on, Jim. Well, it seems pretty clear that Adam's just picked up where his brother's left off. It looks like Dion wants an end to it. So do we all. Yeah, well, it's just possible that all this may push her over the edge. I mean, if the boy has been crippled on purpose, that might give us a bit of leverage with her. Good. Only I'm afraid we can't be certain that the accident was deliberate. I thought we had a witness. We did. Why? Why did you give us a total fabrication? You kept on at me. All I said was what I thought you wanted to hear. If you didn't see anything, that's all you had to say. Well, it all went off so fast. Things were happening. It was... What? Exciting? I'll go some days. I don't speak to anyone. Stuck up here. Spare me. All I wanted to be was useful. I didn't mean any harm by it. All right, Mr. Gibbons. Let's start again, shall we? Just tell me exactly what you did see. No matter how dull, no matter how boring. When did this come in? A couple of minutes. Hospital said it was going to be touch and go soon. Yes, thanks, Matthew. Is anyone informing the next of kin? June Ackland. OK, thanks. Right. Looking for me, Gary? Sir, I've got Lynn Holland in the interview room. I think you ought to hear what she's saying. I 
his old Adam to leave it, but oh no. He had to be hard, just like his brothers. Mrs. Cracknell, we may have been wrong before. As things stand, we've no evidence that the accident was anything but just that. But you said... We may have been wrong. That is sick! First you tell me one thing! No, it don't make any odds. It don't make it any easier. I've done that journey a hundred times. I know it inside out. So, what went wrong today? Don't know. I was coming up to the pub on the corner, and I went to do a right. Only the brakes didn't work properly. I kept trying, but... Were you aware that you had defective brakes? Um, the pedal's been soft for a while. Did you get it looked at by a garage? A couple of lads at work. They know about cars and... They said to wait till the next service. And do you think that was good advice? And you were happy to take that risk, were you, Miss Holland? To put other road users in danger merely to save a few pounds? <laughs> Lynn, what happened after? Why didn't you stop? I didn't know what to do. I just panicked. Is that why you drove over his body? Ran him over as he lay on the road? he was there. Not in front of me. Not until I heard. I felt the car go up. It was like I'd gone over a curb. And you still didn't stop. I couldn't think about anything. Except yourself. I didn't know what I was doing. All I wanted was to go back to the way things were before it happened. Wipe it away. So no one will find out. Sorry, Miss Holland. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> I'm afraid the pedestrian you hit died in hospital from the injuries he sustained. <gasps> Lynn Holland, I'm arresting you on a charge of causing death by dangerous driving. <laughs> you do not have to say anything unless you wish to do so, but what you say may be given in evidence. 